right, so the ingredients we need for our sofrito. We're going to need one to two celery sticks, one or two carrots, and about a half an onion chopped. Okay, so in a large uh, pot here, we're going to add in our extra virgin olive oil. And you're going to be generous with this, and uh, we're going to start this at a low heat. And just let that warm up slowly, and uh, then we're going to add our sofrito inside here. All right, so now that we got the... Uh, the extra virgin, virgin olive oil up to heat here. We're just going to add all our vegetables in there slowly, okay? Just like that. And okay, don't turn up the heat too high. You want this to cook slowly. Some pieces inside there. There we go. All right. Okay, so for this recipe, um, ideally you want to use uh, about 50% uh, ground meat and 50% pork. Uh, but in uh, our household here, not everybody uh, likes to eat the, uh, the meat, so you can use the alternative. And in this case, we're using about uh, two packages or a thousand grams of ground chicken. You can use ground turkey, you can use ground veal, whatever you want, okay? All right, so now that we have our sofrito here properly cooking, once you start smelling those aromas, uh, the carrot, the onion, the celery, um, that's when you want to start adding your meat, okay? So we're just basically sweating the vegetables, okay? So here, let's add in that meat right there. Okay. And then we're going to mix that all together. Okay, so let's just mix that in. And you want to make sure you just keep mixing until that uh, you get that meat all broken up into little small chunks. You're going to need one glass of red wine to put into your meat. And uh, just a side note here, I just found this wine. This is a Masi, Fresco di Masi, and it's an actually organic wine. Decided to give it a try and I just tasted it and it's really good actually. So if you want a good recommendation for a wine pairing with your lasagna, there you have it. All right, so as you can see here, we got the chicken cooked down a bit. Uh, what you wanna do is see, they got a little bit of uh, moisture, water inside there. That's from the vegetables, the meat. So we want to cook that down a little bit more and then we're going to add our wine. Okay, and then a side note here, as you can see, I've um, basically broken up the meat into smaller pieces. Uh, you want to just keep going around, breaking it up. You don't want big chunks in your lasagna. That properly cooked down, we still have a little bit of moisture in there, but uh, that's going to, you know, make the sauce uh, a little bit nicer and it's going to make it taste really good. Now we're just going to add our wine. So pour that in there, okay. Just like that. And what you want to do here is just raise the temperatures just slightly. And at this point here, we're just going to mix that in there. And we're going to let that cook down, okay? So we're going to let that wine uh, combine in with the flavors of the meat, the celery, the carrots, and the onion. That's going to give a really nice flavor. So it's very, very important that you add the wine before you add your, uh, your sauce or your passata, all right? For this recipe, you're going to need about two bottles of passata, all right, and uh, you can use any passata here. We use uh, Thai passata, but if you got some homemade passata or homemade tomato sauce, you can use that too. No problems. Just try to choose the one that, you know, doesn't have uh, a lot of uh, ingredients. So, for example, this one here is just uh, strained tomatoes and a little bit of salt. That's it. So, there's no exact measurement for salt or pepper. Just throughout the recipe, you will be needing salt. Uh, mainly and uh, pepper and some salt and pepper for the the sauce uh, and uh, some salt for the uh, the bechamel as well so again just salt to taste and uh, just make sure you don't over season anything that red wine cooked down a bit you can see this is what you want your sauce to ideally look like okay and then you just want to add your salt and pepper inside there like that that should be good and then we're just going to mix that in Okay, and then the next step here is to add our passata. Okay, so we have an un, we have an open bottle of passata here, so we're going to just add that first. And there was about uh, three quarters of a bottle, so I'm going to put the whole bottle inside there. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to mix that in, and I'm going to see at what consistency we're at. Now the trick here is to uh, you you don't want the uh, the sauce too runny. But at the same time, you don't want it too, too thick. Uh, you want it enough so that basically um, it's easy, 
you can easily spread it on your lasagna sheets, okay? And then you're gonna probably need uh, yeah, probably need another maybe half a bottle is my guess. So let's go ahead and uh, put that in. Let's mix this in first. So as you can see here, we have our sauce. Now what we're gonna do here is let this uh, cook, uh, thicken up. We're gonna do this for about two hours, okay? So we wanna keep that heat on, uh, on low there, okay? And we're gonna cover it up so that we can uh, seal in all those uh, flavors um, and make the beautiful uh, bolognese ragu over here, okay? For our lasagna. Now I, I used about uh, three quarters of one bottle of passata and then uh, half a bottle of the other bottle, okay? But just go by sense, use your, use your eye you kind of want it at this consistency. Again, it needs to thicken up a bit uh, after the two hours. So, uh, cook it on low, cover it up, and in this time while we wait, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the, uh, the bechamel. I'm gonna mention that you keep some of your passata at the, at the end because you're gonna want to use some of the passata uh, to spread on the bottom of your uh, lasagna pan, okay? And then we're going to also use it on the, the very last or the top layer uh, of our lasagna as well. So for the bechamel sauce, we're going to need the following ingredients. We're going to need approximately about 50 grams of butter, about three, two to three dried bay leaves, uh, some nutmeg, uh, some sea salt or table salt. And then over here we have about 500 milliliters of uh, whole milk. Now, very important note please do not use cream, okay? And uh, over here we have, uh, I'd say it's about maybe two cups of sifted all-purpose flour. Now the reason why we sift this, okay, is because we don't want clumps within our bechamel. Okay, so you wanna start with a low, medium uh, saucepan here. You wanna add the butter in, okay? And then uh, basically gonna let that butter melt down, okay? And once that's melted down, we're gonna add our sifted flour in. Okay, so now that we got the uh, butter melted down, we're just gonna add the uh, flour here. I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. That's about good. Okay, and I'm just gonna stir that. And the idea here is um, to get the flour to uh, absorb into the, the butter and uh, let it sort of dry in there, okay? Let's get that nice. And don't burn it here, so make sure if you need to lower down the heat, make sure you lower down the heat, okay? Very slow process, okay. So we're gonna have to, have to add a little bit more flour to that. All right, so you wanna add enough flour to your butter, uh, basically when it looks like this, okay? And any flour you don't use, well, you just put it back in the bag because it's still good, okay? So then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our milk. So when I add my milk, I'm just gonna do about half. Okay, not all of it. Let's see here, what's that about? Ah, uh, seem pretty good about there. So let's do that for now and let's just incorporate that and uh, see what we need, to see if we need to add more to that afterwards. Okay, so we're just gonna add in some nutmeg here. Okay, and some salt, pinch or two. There we go, and let's get that mixed up. So what's happening is here, I, I got this in about a medium to low heat again, and I'm just constantly stirring until that bechamel thickens up, okay? Now I do have some milk and some flour, like I said, put the flour away. Uh, the milk, uh, we'll see if we're gonna need any more. You don't want this to be runny, you kinda want it to be nice, thick, but uh, thick enough that you can uh, easily apply it to the, uh, the lasagna sheets, okay? And see here it's sticking up, there's some of the flour there, so you want to get rid of all that extra flour that clumps inside there, so you got to keep stirring, okay? So this is going to take you a little a little while to do. It uh, should thicken up in about, I'd say about 15 to 20 minutes. See it's thickening up. Lower down the heat just a little bit. You don't want that to curl. And this is the point where we're gonna put in our, our bay leaves here, okay? Like I said, two or three. And there, you're just gonna let those infuse like that, okay? I'm gonna bring this to low. And basically, I'm gonna let that thicken up just a little bit more, and then our bechamel will be ready. All right, so we got that bechamel, the thickness that we want, as you can see. 
Okay, that's the consistency you want. Okay, the bay leaves you're gonna you're gonna take out. Okay, but for now, again, just keep stirring there, just like that. But this will go on your lasagna sheets very nicely, and you can get a um, a brush, a food brush, and uh, put it on there, or nicely go over with a little spoon. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that afterwards. Okay, there you have your bechamel all ready to go. All right, so these are the cheeses you want to use for this lasagna. Now, you, you can use any cheese you want, uh, really, but, you know, stick to the mozzarella, uh, parmigiano reggiano, or the pecorino. Uh, you can even use uh, provolone inside there as well. And um, what you don't want to use, and I cringe every time I, I see people using this on, like, TikTok videos or other YouTube videos, is when they use the pre-shredded uh, mozzarella. That's a no-no, okay? It's got some sort of caking agent inside there and it's not what you want. So here's what you want to do. You either want to get the uh, dried like or like the uh, the semi-dry um, fresh mozzarella like you would find typically you would use like in when you're making pizza or you can use uh, fresh mozzarella, fiore di latte or even buffalo mozzarella, okay? I prefer to use this. It's a little drier there's not going to be any excess uh, water, okay? And so I also like to use uh, what's called pecorino romano, okay? So this comes from cow's milk and this comes from sheep's milk, okay? That's also just a uh, remaining piece of uh, pecorino, okay? But you can also use, uh, you know, parmigiano reggiano. Please do not use parmesan cheese, okay? That's not parmigiano reggiano. It's not the same thing doesn't even taste the same, doesn't smell the same, and frankly, it's an insult to your your, your pasta or uh, your lasagna. Okay, so cow's milk, this is the uh, fresh uh, packaged mozzarella, and this is the pecorino romano. You can also use a pecorino toscano too if you'd like, if you have that, okay? All right, and if they, again, if they don't have the, uh, the pecorino uh, or the sheep's milk uh, cheese, then you can always substitute and use the parmigiano reggiano, but I, I like the combination of the two. Okay. okay so I'm just gonna finish in, finish off shredding the mozzarella there. And as you see, I shredded up the pecorino cheese, but I'm probably gonna need a little bit more. Okay. And that looks about good. Okay. Now, this may or may not be enough, but whatever you need afterwards, if you don't need mozzarella, you can always store it in a Ziploc bag and use it for other dishes afterwards. Okay, so we're ready to uh, start assembling our lasagna. So we cooked our beautiful bolognese sauce here and we got our beautiful silky smooth bechamel ready to go. Our cheese is grated, our pasta sheets, fresh pasta sheets here are cut or pre-cut, okay, for us to fit in our uh, pasta dish over here. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna preheat the oven here. You wanna set that to bake and you wanna put that to about 375 to about 450, okay? So we're going to start that there. Now we're ready to assemble our lasagna. So the first thing you want to do, all right, you can use uh, any dish you want. I'm using a uh, rock pan dish here. Gives a nice texture to the lasagna. But what you want to do here is just want to coat it with just a little bit of olive oil, just like that. Okay, so we got a little bit of olive oil, a little bit too much. Just coat the pan there. All right, that's just going to prevent it from sticking at the sides. Okay, even though this is a non-stick pan, uh, I just like to coat it. I never, I never trust it, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside there. Now what you want to do here is you want to add just a little bit of that passata that I told you about, not too much. Okay, just enough to coat. You can use that same brush inside there as well. Put it all around, okay? And that's about good. You don't want any more than that, okay? Let me set that aside and put that in the sink. All right, so the first thing you want to do here is you want to start layering your uh, pasta sheets, okay? So like I said, every pan, pan is going to be different, so make sure you cut them according to the uh, size of your pan, okay? So I'm going to put one pan sheet down there. And we're going to put another one inside there, just like that, okay? Ideally, you want it to covering the, the whole surface inside there, okay? Okay, uh, pause. 
Okay, so we got a little bechamel inside there. Just gonna put some there. Put some right there. Okay. And again, you don't want to put too much. It's just a, a light coating of bechamel. And then you just get your brush, kind of paint it on there. Okay, just like I'm doing. Okay, this is just to add just a little bit of flavor inside there. All right. And the bechamel goes. We can add a little bit more if you want, no problem. Okay. This is what really gives the uh, the heart to the lasagna is that bechamel sauce. You can ultimately use uh, ricotta if you want, uh, but the best thing to use, in my opinion, is the, the bechamel. Okay. So the next thing you want to do here is you want to add uh, some of that bolognese sauce inside there. Okay, step that out of the way. There we go. You want to kind of spread it all out like that. Okay, you don't want to do it too much, or just want to put enough, get a little bit of texture inside there, because we got a lot of layers to go. Okay, and then from here, what we do is uh, put some uh, pecorino romano. Okay, there we go. Like that. Let's just spread that sauce around just a little bit more. You want to kind of get it right into the corners. You want to cover everything. Okay, just like that. There you go. That's much better. It doesn't have to be perfect because at the end result, once you cut into it, it's going to look perfect and that's what really counts. And then we're going to get our shredded mozzarella. Just going to spread that all around. Just like that. Okay. Move on, move the looks. Just a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to go on to the other sheets. We're going to keep layering until we get to the very top. Okay, this is impossible. Okay, so we've uh, putting on our final layer here. Now, the final layer, you're just going to basically, you're not going to add any of the uh, the sauce or anything like that. You're just going to lay that up like that. There we go. And uh, what you want here, again, you just want to do a little bit of a uh, passata. Okay, so let's just put Anything here until afterwards, so we're just going to get that a little bit more on top of there. Okay, so now that we got that ready here, we're going to pop this in the oven. First, we're just going to cover it up with a little bit of aluminum foil. Put that in the oven. We're gonna cook it between 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, I would say about halfway through. Just uh, you know, put a neck inside there and just check if the middle of the lasagna is warm. All right. So, so let's check on our lasagna here. Pull that out. Oh, it smells terrific. Put that on the right there. Let's stick with some gloves here. Oh, that looks very, very nice. Okay. Let's close that oven. A knife just to see. Put that right in the middle there. Touch it. Yeah, that's nice and warm. Okay, so the final step what we're going to do here, we're going to get our pecorino romano. And we're just going to grate that all over the type, top of the lasagna. Be generous, okay? Just like that. Beautiful. Oh, I can smell the lasagna. It smells fantastic. This is amazing. I hope it tastes as good as it looks, guys. Let's see, being generous right here. Pecorino Romano. That's good. Okay, now I'm going to leave this uncovered. I'm going to put it back in the oven. Okay. And we're 
just going to let it cook for another five to ten minutes. Just like that. Okay. And if you want, you want to make it a little more crunchy on top. Just I just leave it set, but you can set it to uh, broil. But uh, just leave it in the oven; it's perfectly fine. Okay. We're going to come back. We're going to cut that up, and we're going to enjoy some lasagna. I'm so psyched. We just pulled out the lasagna out of the oven, uncovered, and this is what you want it to look like. You got a little bit of sauce up there. You got that pecorino cheese. Uh, if you want to add more cheese to it, go right ahead on top. Um, preferably, there's a lot of cheese in this already, and this is the way uh, we like it. I like to see that little bit of that pasta showing there as well. And this turns out really good. Get that right exact there. It's kind of it's a little bit hot there, so I just want to be careful. I did let it cool down a bit. So if we can do some one try here, we go from this side. Not quite fully there. Oh my god! Oh look at that, beautiful. We'll just put that on top of there. Oh, how good does that look, guys? That's six layers of beautiful lasagna. Look at that. Got the bechamel inside there. You know what? Just to top it off, let's put a little bit more pecorino romano. Okay. Let's cut that up here. Let's uh, try that out. We got a fork and a knife. Oh, look at that bechamel come, the mozzarella. Oh my God, that's so good. Oh yeah, you know what you're gonna do, right? Just put a whole thing in your mouth here. A little too big, actually. It's so, oh, it's just so delicious, smells so good. I know this is gonna be amazing. Bon appetit, guys. Madonna, this is, mm, this is really, really good. This is so good, oh my God. Guys, don't forget to subscribe, like the channel, uh, make a comment below, share this video with all your friends. It's all about the dough. I'm in heaven. Mm. Thanks for watching, guys.